Hey guys, happy Thursday, happy Thursday to you. It's lunchtime. I'm glad because I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. This is my lunch today, y'all. It's a uh, salad. It's looking kind of tired. I'll tell y'all about it. And an enchilada bag, a slice of it. I had this yesterday. I made it yesterday. And so I made a salad big enough for two days, right? I'm going to have that for lunch tomorrow. And the salad was looking tired yesterday. Cucumbers was looking a little rough, the lettuce. But uh, it's, uh, it's, I'm going to make it do what it do. And y'all know I got me some uh, uh ranch. Well, y'all don't know. I'm going to tell you. I got some ranch in the Olive Garden Italian on here. And it's just lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, shredded carrots, and strawberries. And I got a few croutons and some of those onion things and a little bacon bits. So, yeah, y'all. Oh, I ain't said no kind of grace. I must really be hungry. Oh, hold on, Lord. I'm sorry. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for blessing me, Lord, to see another day. Thank you for food I'm about to receive for the nourishment of my body. In Christ's name, amen. And, y'all, the tea, I just got some Arizona half and half zero. That lemon and whatever. Trying tea. Now, you see how I lifted it up and took a drink and was ready to bite into that a few minutes ago. Ooh, child, bye. So, y'all know I like to run my mouth. But the first thing, I know some of you take metformin. And my girlfriend just sent, because I think she thought I was still taking it. But I had to stop that immediately, pretty much. Even the extended. Um, they've had a recall on metformin, uh, the extended kind, the extended release kind. So what you want to do is check with your doctor and pharmacist to make sure if you're taking it, whatever you're taking, that you're not taking the kind that's been recalled. And this article out there apparently it's had some cancer causing ingredients in it. Also, y'all, y'all, don't it disturb you when you go to, now I'm not a teacher by any means. I used to substitute teacher. But doesn't it disturb you when you go into a store? I don't know if it's laziness, but it makes me wonder about this new man and the young person can't really figure out the change or something happens with the register they can't never really figure out the change and then they sitting there confused when you tell them and they have a befuddled look on their face like what and i'm like you almost want to stop there and give a math lesson right So then they pull out their phone to do the calculator. And you're like, it's 69 cents a dollar, 31 cents. What? You know, it almost be that simple. It was, you're looking like you confused at that point. So it makes you wonder. Wow. You know, I know that this thing with the new math, which... Like when my daughter was in school, they started teaching it then because she would be telling me, Mama, you're doing wrong. Even though it's the right answer, you're doing wrong. Okay. Whatever. Now, are there any studies on this that says this math is really any better? Not that I'm trying to be funny. It just seems like it's overcomplicated something that could be so simple. And simple apparently works that we can do math in our head. It, I know everybody can, but most people can do the basics in their head. And it's sad to see when these young people can't do that. And it's based off them learning new math. So, I'm pretty sure a lot of these teachers that's having to teach new math, could y'all tell me, I mean, learn the simple and basic way that we did. So, I 
Are there any benefits that I must be missing? On the um on a new map. Yeah, I know if y'all may not have seen it before, but I told y'all how I make this before. I use the low carb wraps. Because you use less wraps when you do the bake. I put them in one of those round uh, baking dishes. With the lid. But in here I scrambled up ground beef, peppers, onions, mushrooms, red pepper flakes, and diced tomatoes. All together. After I scrambled the ground and drained the ground beef. With my choice of seasoning. And then you layer it in a baking dish with the you can you don't have to use low carb wraps by the way I just do to make it a low carb and I have to use so many many wraps like making the traditional enchiladas you put a little of you spray your pan and you put a little of the meat mixture down on the bottom then you put a um, tortilla wrap and then you put um some enchilada sauce on. I use the red. You can use red or green. The meat mixture. A layer of cheese. Then you put another tortilla wrap. And you do that until the top. And you want a little meat mixture and uh, cheese on top. And you bake it in a 350 oven. For. Uh, 350 to 4. 100 degree oven for 30 minutes. And you want to at least let it sit for 30 minutes to get out a clean slice. But y'all, it's really good if you like the enchiladas. Or it could be because it's consisted of a Mexican bacon or whatever you want to call it. But it's really good. I enjoyed it anyway. And I used the whole, I don't put a whole lot of cheese. You can use more between each layer. But I used the eight ounce bag of shredded cheese in this. Yeah. I was watching this YouTube yesterday. And I watch them periodically. It's a couple on YouTube, an interracial couple. They're young uh, young kids. What are college students? And they both run track. Well, they're, they're respective colleges. He is a person with um, prosthetics. He runs track with prosthetics on his legs, both his legs. Now, I don't know the story of why he wears prosthetics and how it happened, but he does. So, he's an excellent runner, though. And anyway, yesterday, they blessed this couple with two cars. Well, I don't know when it was. I'm just saying I saw the video yesterday. And... In the video, I would recommend people watch it. The mother was talking in the video. And she apparently fosters and had adopted kids before, but she said she doubt unless God puts it on her heart, she would ever adopt again. And she was encouraging people, like, at least go to the class if you're thinking about fostering. But she said she would always foster children. Because if you have room and you have a space at your table, why not? I listened to her testimony. I thought it was really nice. The video, it was nice to see them get blessed, this family, with these two vehicles. However, that's not what I got out of the video. At one point during the video, she was talking about her struggle with 
I don't know how she told the story exactly, but basically, if 99 people like her and one person don't, doesn't, she worries about the one person that doesn't like her. And I think a lot of people are like that. People get in their feelings a lot on YouTube. I see that. And I know that negativity seems to stand out a lot. So you can have a thousand nice comments and you see that one and it's just like, but sometimes I see it and I'm like, what is wrong with this person? You know, but I don't focus on it and it don't bother me. I'm like, well, I told y'all my block game ain't strong, man. I'm not going to deal with foolishness because life is too short. And it's a choice if you want to watch or not, I say. So well, I don't know why you stand keep to make yourself miserable watching somebody you don't like. So let me help you out. So she was talking about that. But what I got out of that was, and I know that's human nature and we do sometimes, you know, but what she went on further to say, she grabbed a Bible. And I was telling, it wasn't just patches of, of scripture. I'm actually studying the book of Isaiah now still. And I was telling one of my girlfriends and one of my previous co-workers that I don't know. My dad was a minister at all. And so we was in church always, you know, in something. And so I oftentimes read scriptures and don't understand them. And I was telling her some parts of Isaiah have been a struggle. I'm not quite sure I understand what I'm reading. And sometimes I'll pull out my women's Bible and read it again, and I still don't understand. And she said, one of my coworkers said to me, God will bring it to you. He'll bring it to you. And understand that. You don't have to ask anybody to explain it to you or anything. And y'all have been in Bible study sometimes. I'll be like, what are they talking about? And Sunday school too. And I'm like, sometimes I don't pull, I'm just quiet because I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Back in the day. So she read this scripture, Matthew 26. And it's funny how. It's not that I don't understand Matthew 26. But it's funny how when you see people apply things to their life, how it helps you better get a, more clarity in how you can apply it to your own life. And that was just a testimony of how God will bring stuff to you when you need need it and need the understanding of it. And just hearing her talk about how that book of Matthew calms her. And it's about God providing for you. You know, you don't have to be anxious and worried if he provides for the birds of the land. He'll surely provide for you. You are just as precious. So, y'all, this is so good. That's what I got out of that. This is my last thing. Y'all know what I got say. Here she goes. She jumped from one thing to next. So, I was on TikTok this morning about five something this morning. And TikTok came up. And this gentleman was talking about men not working. And not doing anything, living with a woman. And the woman's accepted it. And basically, he was telling the dude that 
Keep living your best life. If that's what she's accepting. It's something wrong with her, not you. You got it made. And that's the truth. And I, my comment was in the comments and saying, you can see that and say something to it all day. To your friend or if you see a friend going through and they'll swear up and down that you have some type of envy about that situation. It's not that you're envious of that. You want to see something better for their life. And I said in the comments, maybe hearing it from them will make you see that how foolish it is to do this. And maybe they'll get something out of it and realize that it's not a jealousy thing. It's a person wanting something good for you. And to that said, I thought about my brothers, both of them. And I'm so proud of my brothers because I think that's what's wrong with a lot of men today. They lay up with their mothers and then they go into a woman's house. They don't know what it is to provide for a family, themselves, let alone a family, to know what it is to make a home. And I see mothers being a lot harder on their daughters to be independent and strong, but they don't have the same expectations of their son to get out and be a man and, and, and do some things that you'll be able to lay the foundation for when you do get a family. Or you'll be able to lay a foundation to take care of yourself, you know, and that's not all mother, so I'm not I'm just saying that seems to be something that's going on. And it's not just in the black community, it's in all races, but I do see it in the black community. And uh it's not good. You know, and uh yes, I'm old school. I've said this nine hundred and ninety nine times. I've told my daughter this. I believe in a man being a provider for the home. That's not to say that I'm going to do what I want to do anytime time I want to do it. No. If I'm working and my husband's working, we're going to pull together what we got to make it. But I want to know that my husband has me just like I will have him. In the event I can't work, that he's going to get out and have the same hustle mentality. Mind. That's why you have to align with people that are evenly yoked. That's, what, that's part of being evenly yoked. Not only in faith. But in how you approach life and the things you do, you don't have to be the same because opposite do attract. But you have to have a mentality, a certain type of mentality to say, baby, I got you. We may have to do less. And that's why I never was concerned about dating anyone that made less. And people call it dating down. I didn't care about that. I dated men that made more than me and men that made less. What I needed to see is you had a hustle mentality. That baby, I'm going to get out here and roll with the punches. I'm going to get out here. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to bring this into the home. I'm going to make sure that we are taken care of and we provide for. We're going to pull this together and do what we got to do. And a lot of times that's missing now with men nowadays. You know, if like I tell my daughter and her young man, if something happened to her, you got to be able to get out here and do it. You got to do it. You got to get it. Make sure she covered and make sure she all right. And that's the same if something should happen to him. But you got to know that your man got you. A woman wants to feel protected and a man wants to feel respected. And I know respect go across the board, but you got to have that. And so it, I just am proud of my brothers. And if I don't never say it, and y'all never know it, but of course I tell them all the time, especially my older brother. I don't really talk to my younger brother that much, but I am very proud of y'all. You know, dad raised y'all to be good men. You do what you're supposed to do as a man. You take care of your family. You get out here and work as a human being, not only as a, just a man, just a man. But I'm proud to see that you take care of the things you're supposed to do. My brother reaches out and helps us, his sisters, and do things for us and for my niece, for my daughter, which is his niece. You know, he helped her all while she was in college. But I just wanted to leave this today. If y'all got a man, especially coming up on Father's Day, everybody's not a father. My oldest brother is not a father, but he stepped up. With Father's Day coming up Sunday, y'all make sure you tell these men in your life that you appreciate what they do. And it's not to give them praise for what they supposed to do. But it just lets you know. Because you don't get a reward for doing what you're supposed to do in life. But you do need to be let them know that they are appreciated and you are thankful. And it's nothing wrong with being appreciative for somebody that's doing something for you and doing the things that they're supposed to do as a man. So I encourage y'all to celebrate your loved ones this Father's Day just to say thank you. Even if it's the call and say, I appreciate you, the ones that stand in the gap for what you've done. I love you and I thank you. Anyway, that's enough of my jaw-japping as usual. 
But anyway, I want y'all to know y'all loved. I'm going to get back to work here. I got a late meeting today at 3. But I enjoyed my lunch. It was delicious. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later this week. You know you loved. I love you. But God truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Love you. Bye.